awkward. I'm going to pause it. All right. It's a great honor uh, to introduce Jason uh, to this uh, student presentation. Jason has been um, a, a very productive member of our team, and um, he's, um, today's presentation is a part of his competition at the um, a supercomputer in 2020. And he is one of the four finalists among uh, the uh, Carnegie Mellon, um, Los Alamos, uh, not Los Alamos, but Livermore, and Lawrence Berkeley at Stony Brook. So um, now we wish him luck uh, next month. And I wish him luck for this uh, great presentation uh, for him. All right, Jason, you Thank you. stop, please. Yes, uh, let me share my screen. Yes, thank you, Professor Deng, for the opening. And uh, uh, hello, uh, I'm Ji Zhang. You may call me Jason. And honestly, I didn't expect such a large uh, grant audience. And I hope you guys can enjoy the, the presentation. And I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Applied Mathematics and Statistics from Stony Brook under the supervision of Professor Yue Fan Deng, uh, who is also affiliated in ISCS. So uh, today I want to thank ISCS for having this great opportunity to present our latest research about uh, leveraging on two amazing technologies in HPC and AI for scientific discoveries. So uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to interrupt me at any time. And we are lucky to team up with Dr. Cong and Dr. Yang from the IBM TJ Watson Research Center. And, and this work is supported by the SUNY IBM Consortium. And as Professor Deng mentioned, it's also lucky this work is nominated in one of the four uh, best poster finalists, along with the world's leading institutions at the Supercomputing 2020 conference uh, in this coming November. So, uh, let's begin the presentation. First of all, a brief introduction of this work, AI meets HPC, learning the cell motion in biofluids. So we kind of explored the potential of coupling AI with HPC to tackle application with life and death significance. So we enabled the studies of the cell motion in biofluids to provide a practical example for uh, what future HPC can do and how future HPC architectures should evolve. So I divided my presentation into five sections to help bring you to a detailed picture of what we do. So in these five sections, I try to follow the logic of three Ws, uh, what, why, and how. What is our problem? Why is it important and how we're gonna solve it? So in the first section of introduction and motivation, we want to give you the what and the why in three aspects. So the first is from the basic physics. So in, in theoretical physics, the century old Jeffrey Orbit's equation that we refer as Joule describes the uh, motion of an isolated ellipsoid in viscous fluid. For example, as we graphed here in the diagram, shows the rotation of an oblate shaped cell in a laminar motion fluid. Phi denotes the rotation angle and phi dot is the rotation angular velocity. So since the first introduction of the Jeffrey Orbitz equation in 1922, researchers have been trying to improve this equation for phi and phi dot. And finally in 2015, two correction terms were added to the principal term from geo to form a modified geo that we call MGO here. And our goal uh, in, in this project is to use HPC, AI, and physics and mathematics insights, you name it, to further improve MGO. And my next slide will show why this work is significant. The second aspect is from the numerical simulations. It turns out Although GEO is popular and has been used as benchmark solutions to validate the numerical simulations, it does not always agree with numerical results. Uh, our previous study also revealed the limitations of the century old Jeffrey Orbitz equation. 
when considering the fluid properties and the cell shape deformability. From these left uh, corner figures, you can see the clear gap between the uh, geo solutions and the modeling results. This may have dramatic impact when developing models to validate or getting scientific, uh, scientific conclusions. In the right hand side, we used and tested two different body setups in the simulation, rigid body and deformable body. The deformability is where the significance lies because vital applications of geo for modeling the motion of living cells in biofluids uh, kind of require us to vary the cell shapes and the fluids dynamically. So in this work, we also focus uh, the motion of a human platelet in which cause blood flow at various shear stresses, which here in this case are dominantly rotations. But why do we care about the platelet? So studying platelets actually has profound clinical significance. The story starts uh, from the cardiovascular disease, which had been one of the leading causes of death in the US and thrombosis is a common pathology underlying cardiovascular disease. It is the formation of a blood clot, which may block the blood flow and leads to serious problem in the circulatory system. So a little background about the uh, uh, blood clot and the platelet effects. So have you ever wondered what stops you from bleeding when you get hurt? Actually, in a healthy body, uh, the blood clots play an important role in this process. For example, at the site of an injured cart, the blood platelets and red blood cells are held together in this animation here by a rope-like molecular coil fibrin. And this forms a blood clot, which plugs up the cut and stops bleeding. But it, it can cause major health disease uh, when it happens at the wrong time. For example, if a clot is formed in the arteries, it may lead to the heart attack or stroke. So platelet is actually the key initiator and enhancer in the formation of thrombosis. Our group has made decades of efforts to study platelet activation, adhesion, and aggregation, which may help develop clinical technologies to cure the fatal disease. In fact, in the recent COVID-19 pandemic, researchers also found abnormal activation of platelets in COVID-19 patients. This virus may reduce the platelet count by several mechanisms. For instance, the platelet production may be reduced while more platelets are destroyed or consumed in intravascular clots. Therefore, based on all of the reasons, Platelet motion in bloodstream is used in this work as the presenting example for our methodology. So now to present our methods, first of all, in our framework, HPC was fundamental to establish the ground truth for online machine learning. We modeled the motion of platelets using multi-scale modeling, which referred as MSM. There are six spatial scales from nanometer to millimeter and the uh, nine temporal scales from picosecond to millisecond that we have included in our platinum model. This is our uh, numerical model compared with the real platinum image under the electron microscope. We use the uh, atomic level molecular dynamics to simulate the nano scale structure of the cytoskeleton and the coarse grain molecular dynamics to simulate the platelet platelet interaction and platelet flow interaction. So, different levels of force fields are applied to describe the platelet dynamics. And based on different flow and position conditions, our system that at the top scales could reflect different activities. For example, the platelet free flow uh, rotation, adhesion to the blood vessel walls, and recru uh, recruitment aggregation, etc. So, as we explain the different MSM uh, setups, 
in this work, we want to simulate a single plate that rotate in the system. So our model considers rotation of a deformable platelets in viscous blood flows at the nano to micron length scales. A micro channel is simulated by a rectangular region with uh, dimensions of 16 by 16 by eight in micrometer. The blood vessel walls are modeled at the top and bottom boundaries in Y axis and uh, no slip boundary condition is applied. The entire system incorporated more than 1 million fluid particles and around uh, 140,000 plated particles. The shear blood flow is modeled using counter wave flow by driving the top and bottom walls in opposite directions along the X axis. So with uh, different moving velocities of walls, fluid conditions of different shear stresses for example, in this work, we used 50, 100, 200, and 300, et cetera, in dying per centimeter square are applied to the system. Uh, all the numerical simulations are implemented by our modified LAMPS package on RPIs, AMOS, and the IBM's WSC supercomputers. The runtime performance could achieve nearly 50 times steps per second and it takes about 27 hours to simulate one millisecond. As comparison, the simulated platelet may spend two milliseconds for one rotation period. In the left corner is an animation with the plot of a velocity at different rotation positions. And in the right-hand side, here are some snapshots of velocity distributions during the simulated rotation process. As we expected, the deformal body simulations generate more noisy streaming data because the rotation axis in the deformal body simulations is instantaneous. This results in a more dispersed and uneven pattern, as you can see here in the plated surface, comparing with rigid body simulations. Okay, so now we have the ground truth, how to learn them. As I introduced in the beginning of this presentation, the classic Jeffrey Orbis has limitations. So firstly, we want to generalize it. This is the data points we got from the numerical simulations and how we mapped them with real rotation positions. The sequences are rotation angle phi and rotation angular velocity phi dot. Their relationship is also we want to formulate. We proposed a new equation of motion for a rotation angular velocity phi dot by a function of rotation angle phi and three equation parameters, lambda zero, lambda one, and C zero. So this equation, we refer it as GGO. It considers more physics conditions neglected in the original development where the lambda zero describes the deviation from the perfect oblate. Lambda one represents the correction in cell shape deformation. You can also understand it. It uh, describes the elastic properties and the de cell deforming capability. It can also be considered as an uh, inherent vibration magnitude. It's subtle, but not negligible. And C zero here, is a fluid interaction term. These three, lambda zero, lambda one, and C zero, are learnable parameters and also our targets in the following online learning framework. And the other constants are from the geo. If you look at this equation, when lambda zero equals to one, lambda one equals to zero, and C zero equals to negative one, our G geo actually reduces to the geo which is a lower order approximation uh, with idealized hypothesis. Uh, this new equation was developed based on physics observation. Now, HPC provides us the enough data to gain knowledge and AI enables us to discover the underlying science by determining the learnable parameters. 
So how about to integrate them and, uh, to and discover science in this setting? Here we present our uh, novel mode, uh, biomechanics informed online learning framework referred as bio. It is uh, developed for deriving equation parameters and consummate our modeling of the dynamic system. We correlate the online learning process with MSM simulations in terms of uh, transferring streaming data, comparing results, and providing termination signals. The biomechanics knowledge informed us to select the proper features and design the custom loss function. We collected raw data from the HPC numerical results and used several denoising filters as pre-processing. Among all the simulation features, we selected rotation angle phi, which is a uh, conformation-based length unit as input, and uh, the output angular velocity phi dot is a dynamical variable implying the biomechanical property of the interest object. It is also implicitly incorporated by the neural network. So instead of simply treating the neural network as a black box, we designed principal functions with conceptual explanations and use the NN to optimize the learnable parameters. For example, with the prior of biomechanics properties, we opened the black box and selected the features informed by the dynamical system. To train the NN and obtain the equation parameters at the same time, we designed a novel and unique loss function with two terms to constrain the NN predictions and the physics formula predictions. For the NN architecture, we use the feed-forward fully connected structure with four hidden layers and 20 neurons per layer. And here are the equation parameters learned from the bio biomechanics informed neural network. And here are the loss of values during learning. After learning the equation parameters, we use them to predict the planetary rotation, which is way more accurate than calculating it by the geo. And in other words, our online learning framework uses the intelligently learned parameters from big data collected through HPC, then accelerates the conventional molecular dynamics. The multi-scale simulations provide streaming data as input to the online learning framework. And conversely, the online learning predictions can feed back and guide the simulation directions. We can also use the objective function values as feedback signals to show whether the learning process is well performed. The future simulation results and the online learning process can validate with each other consistently. Here is the detailed data flow in the bio framework. The inputs and output data sequences are collected from the simulator, then pre-process them with moving averaging and wavelength transformation filters for denoising. Uh, as for the rotation angle, we applied an additional approach to avoid the periodical effects and constrain them within zero to one. To feed the input streaming data, we designed a mixing sampling policy to mix the history code data and recent heart data with online moving windows to compose the training samples for the learning system. And this is the input data sequence, the uh, optimized equation parameters, and the output prediction sequence. And the learned equations could feed back to the simulator and uh, propose some conjunctions and guide the future simulations. So this slide presents an example output of the online learning process. The uh, mixing of the history code data and recent heart data are presented in this animation. Each uh, black line means one sampling position. The prediction using GGO is given below. 
at each given time point, our learning system could always provide a predictive model to inference the future angular velocity phi dot. You can see that only after a few uh, learning steps, our predictions are pretty close to the simulation data. And the right-hand side are the equation parameters trends and their probabilities in the search space. The bottom part is the uh, lost values during learning. So this whole process is online with the ongoing in silico simulation on HPC, which provides the input streaming data. The learning speed is actually much faster than the simulation speed. So for an overall evaluation, we compared our learning results both visually and quantitatively. In the left-hand side, we presented two ex uh, examples of the prediction curves uh, under 100 time per centimeter square uh, simulation setup. And uh, we can see that our online learning results, the green curves are firstly consistent with traditional offline learning, the black curves, but more adaptively and timely. Also by using our GGO, the, uh, we are more accurate than the GEO, the blue curves. And uh, for the default body simulations, even beginning with numerical artifacts, the online learning could robustly get the correct trend and quickly learn the features. Uh, from this top figure, we used different physics theories in the learning system. And clearly, our GGO produces the uh, lowest loss values. And we also examined the normalized mean squared error between ground truth and physics results by different formulas. Under all uh, shear stresses and body setups, our method performs the best and could improve up to 30 times accuracy. So we also give uh, the detailed comparison of equation parameters trends during the online learning process for different experimental setups. The three parameters, lambda zero, lambda one, and C zero are to some extent consistent within a certain range. And lambda zero and lambda one are relatively more stable while uh, C0 may differ and turbulent uh, due to the dynamical changes of the system. So uh, the other achievement of GGO is our improvement and generalization from AIMGEO, the 20, uh, 2015 physics formula. When we expand the GGO and align the terms to compare with modified GEO, we can see that uh, actually, lambda one is showing in both sine two phi and sine four phi terms. Therefore, we did a separate test to uh, to test the uh, accuracy uh, relationship with the parameter numbers, learnable parameter numbers. So, if we settle the lambda zero equals to one and c zero equals to negative one as constant, and just use lambda one as the only learnable parameter in the equation, then, uh, then the equation will be input to the online learning framework. It turns out we can get comparable accuracy with the MGO, which has two parameters. So the significance is that we reduced one direct degree of freedom in the parameter space, but keep the accuracy as well. Also, as we expected, when we increase the number of learnable parameters to two, like settle one parameter as constant, we increase the, the accuracy. And of course, our GGO got the best performance among all. So now we can kind of uh, draw some uh, discussions and the results we got. In the first aspect, we would use physics knowledge to speed up the platelet or other cell simulation. So our proposed GGO generalizes and considers more realistic physics 
which are omitted in June. We also conclude them into three independent and sufficient parameters, lambda zero, lambda one, and C zero. So it could serve as a better benchmark solution for numerical simulations for uh, the uh, verification and validation. Moreover, we provide a fast and accurate methodology, the bio framework, which could naturally transfer to other fields of studying the cell dynamics. And in addition, under favorable situations where the environment is fairly stable, that small perturbations have insignificant effects at the top scales, we can use the online learned predictions to, re to replace some of the time consuming simulations. For example, if we want to model a thrombosis or a blood clot, uh, of course, the atomic simulation can reveal many details, but requires trillions of atoms for modeling. Not alone, we may need to simulate 1000 seconds to monitor some uh, biolo biological phenomena and with more interacting platelets, which is perceptively demanding and requires too much time as well as computing at capacity. So by using the current generation of supercomputers, we would need more than four to five orders of magnitude for speed up. So this is why HPC and our future computing architecture are needed. And also, this is why we want to enhance the physics theory, which may augment the simulation to save the much uh, computing time. And what can we do more to further validate the science we aim to discover? We also want to correlate with in vitro data. We could integrate the AI techniques with HPC resources to intelligently learn the planet dynamics using massive data collected from both in vitro and multi-scale in silico experiments. We collaborated with biofluids research group from the uh, BME department of Stony Brook University who conducted and provided the in vitro experiments with NIH support. These highly correlated cycles give a practical example to fully utilize the in vitro, in silico, and their interaction data, which should be more reasonable and robust for knowledge-based discovery. So this is actually related to one of our previous study. We designed and conducted the in vitro experiments to mimic the platelet dynamics in bloodstream. And after that, a DIC microscope was used to capture the planet images with frame rate of 1000 frames per second. The output huge amount of imaging data is sparse and noisy. So in another of our machine learning based work, we developed a semi unsupervised learning system for planet image segmentation, which extracts the accurate planet boundary details rapidly. And the prediction segments a variety of planet images at the submicron resolutions. And these images include planet activation with pseudopods initiation or multiple planets interaction. Now, in this work as for in silico experiments, we modeled the platelets to capture the rotation of deformable platelets at the nano to micron scales. These simulations establish the ground truth for our online machine learning. In uh, our GGO and bio with streaming data from simulation as input, predict the rotation angular velocity along with the ongoing in silico experiments. So in this way of collecting the and utilizing data, the dynamics of platelet morphology and motion are both accurately captured and learned. So for transferring, uh, for transferring to other cell uh, dynamics study, uh, our methods 
also have huge potential in clinical significance. One special property for platelets, so and why we choose platelets as the presenting example here, is that it may have dramatic shape changes. For example, the activated platelets will grow a long finger shape philopodia, and the presence of philopodia will slow down the rolling dynamics for activated platelets and make them more likely to adhere to the blood vessel. So you can see here in the uh, electron microscopy, the long uh, finger-like rope is the pseudopods or you call it the philopodia. And we also monitored the initiation of philopodia protrusion from in vitro experiments by uh, the segmentation results using the semi-unsupervised learning system. These are several, uh, there are several factors uh, which may initiate the platelet activation. For example, some drugs may affect the membrane stiffness, which is related to the philopodia protrusion. And also in some medical devices like artificial heart, there may exist some gaps or stenosis, which could cause elevated shear stresses in the blood flow. And that is another initiator for platelet activation. So our methodology happens to be designed to, for uh, complex biological systems and uh, different fluid conditions. So both in vitro and in surgical experiments could make use of our proposed framework. This is the workflow to demonstrate the link between MSM simulations and our bio framework, where the data generation, motion, and uh, utilization are organized. We use uh, mainly C++ based uh, and CUDA supported codes for the simulator and Python based codes for pre-processing and the TensorFlow uh, framework for the online learning. We also archived the machine, learning, machine learnable database and reusable model base. So to summarize the presentation, uh, we explored the dynamical uh, uh, online learning for the cell motion in biofluids, not only platelets, by applying the GGO in our bio framework. And HPC resources generated the ground truth for uh, platelet motion in blood and learning enables accurate description of the motion. So this fused mathematics and science informed intelligent assist uh, approach provides a novel AI plus HPC architecture to help uh, accelerate the discovery of knowledge in complex systems such as biomedicine. And also for the future work, we hope uh, in a humble and significant way, our work will assist uh, IBM in its venture of future computing architecture for uh, synergistically integrating the HPC with AI. So you can imagine how wonderful and how natural it is to integrate HPC and AI for tackling natural sciences. Only the sky is the limit. And finally, let me thank the uh, IP Dana team supported by the SUNY IBM Consortium, the Biofluids Research Group leading by Professor Danny Bluston and support from the NIH. And also I want to thank the uh, Professor Robert Harrison and Dr. James Sexton for their inspiring discussions on my prelim. I also want to thank the HPC resources from the RPI Amos supercomputer and also the ISES CWOF cluster. Here are the references used in this presentation. Uh, thank you all for your attention. And that is all of my presentation today. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. Um, uh, this is um, an exciting uh, project and you gave a very nice um, talk. And thank you. Um, are, there, are there any questions from the audience? Oh, no, uh, no uh, I see there is a uh, Wenda Zhang. Uh, uh, hello? Hi. <laughs> hello, hi. yeah. 
Uh, nice talk. A very interesting research. Thank you. Um, so I don't have much background on this, um, but I have just uh, maybe uh, technical questions. So uh, I see sure. that the three parameters that you tried to diagnose uh, were, were kind of stable. Uh, so um, I mean, with the time, they, they have kind of stable values. So I'm wondering if you just use a constant uh, for these three parameters, will they produce the, uh, will, will they also produce decent results? A uh, very, uh, very good question. So actually we kind of thought about to discover the uh, more science based on the, uh, I, I guess this, uh, this slide is where uh, uh, you want to ask about, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. So we uh, kind of want to uh, monitor the trends of the parameters and Actually, it turns out if we only use constant to uh, um, to uh, describe the dynamics of the planet, it's, it's kind of losing the dynamical changes of the uh, system because the system uh, uh, due to the uh, planet's shape deformation, there have to be uh, 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 subtle but not negligible uh, changes with the interactions with the fluid particles. So these changes will cause small uh, turbulations and uh, in the uh, 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 in the parameters as you can see uh, although they kind of uh, stable but to some extent they also have turbulence and this kind of turbulence will cause dramatic impact uh, if we want to develop the uh, the uh, uh, the multi scale models or find some uh, scientific discoveries and also, if you uh, only use the uh, constant values as the parameters, that's actually the uh, classical way or the uh, traditional way to just use constant to calculate by the uh, geo or modified geo. So that's actually the uh, novel part and the significance of this work is that we found the dynamical changes of, of the parameters and, of, and uh, uh, our accuracy does uh, improve much by this kind of uh, framework. Is that uh, answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so if so, the constant if you so these constant values are equal to the the other previous series. Uh, uh so we started the uh, learning process with the in initial values with uh, from the traditional or uh, Jeff Robbins. So that's the initial value here. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah. And after that, the uh, the parameter trends are optimized during the online learning process. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's still a there's still a little difference with the initial values. I mean, uh, after some time. Yeah, uh, I would uh, say that's the. Not um, Jason, Jason yeah. um, uh, you didn't realize what he was driving. Uh, yeah. There's uh, two points. Um, over the last 100 years, people have been trying to have the structure of the equation with the constant coefficients. That's considered the gold uh, standard for physics. And uh, if you can get the structure of the equation and get a constant coefficient, that's great. And um, you, your research here um, didn't um, recover uh, the original constants. You have a different set of constants because you have a different uh, equation um, uh, structure. So uh, then that answers the first question. The second one is you have a great departure from a 100 year old uh, practice. And that practice was to get a constant uh, uh, set of coefficients. Now you have some learning, learned uh, coefficients. Is this a great um, a departure? Um, we don't know yet. Um, yeah. Is um, some, some learning. So um, a, the, a, constants or those coefficients are not expected to be a constant during the entire dynamics. Uh, so um, uh, that's that's what he's driving at. Um, what's the difference? You say there's no difference from the other, but there is uh, since you have a different equation. Your equation is different from the um, 1922 or 98 years old equation. And your equation is also different from the 2015 five year old equation. So you got different equation and for, for which you use classical method to get a coefficients. And then you not only do that, you actually get uh, the uh, little uh, variation um, along this time. 
for better or for worse. We don't know yet, but it's a different from, from the old practice. Right, exactly, yes. Thank you for the adding up points. Yes, that's actually, uh, I agree with Professor Dens, yeah. Okay, okay. Particularly the, big, the bigger contribution is you are uh, able to handle uh, what the older equations, both in 2015, uh, 2015 and the 1923 equations, they have failed to answer uh, the um, deformability. This deformability is not, not just a one time, it's a, a function of time. So uh, that's why you made this possible to simulate some living cells. Uh, uh, cells are reasonably stable in, in, in the body, particularly the fluid cells in the blood, but they change, they have changed, like you said, subtle, yes. but non-negligible. So it's, it's, a, it's a very important contribution. Uh, there's one more, since um, uh, Jason, you have a little extra time, Chelsea, if you may, I will add a few uh, sentences to Jason's talk, and he has um, a, a lot of people are trying to speed up simulations. This is a precisely the right slide, Jason. Um, yeah. uh, stop, uh, uh, simulations from computer science and apply math, and Jason is um, starting uh, simulating, oh sorry, accelerating simulation uh, from physics, and um, so I would say it's a deeper um, acceleration, and this can um, accelerate things by orders, three, four, five orders of magnitude. So this is a game changer. Yeah, yeah thank you. So actually, I'm part of the bigger project for the speeding up the planet simulations, and my part is from the physics part. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and uh, the uh, other questions from the audience. Thank you, Wenda, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very interesting talk. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Jason. Uh, yeah, I wonder if I could follow up on that last point a bit. So, uh, in the original physics simulation, it took maybe like a month to do like one mill millisecond, and now it takes like something much shorter. So, where does the speed up mostly come from? Is it coming because you can sort of reduce the accuracy because you sort of aid it with a predictive model? Or are you actually replacing parts of the simulation with your predictive model? Yeah, so uh, actually this part is kind of the discussion or uh, future work, work we want to uh, uh, further investigate. And uh, uh, so the many speed up come from the, uh, because the, uh, for, the uh, for some of the situations where the uh, environment is fairly stable, we want to use the uh, online learned predictions to replace the time consuming uh, some of the time consuming simula uh, simulation time computings. And uh, uh, also we want to rewind the online learning every uh, once in a while to adjust and the, uh, to uh, uh, fine tune the parameters using the, uh, in the equation so that the predictions could adjust during uh, the dynamical changes of the system. So that part, uh, if we use the online, uh, the GGO equation, to calculate the features we want to get from the simulation, that part could save a lot of time and bring the uh, like uh, orders of the magnitudes for speed up. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I and mean, it's uh, yeah, very impressive that you're, you're able to do this. I guess maybe one further question though, it seems like with all of these mixing times, you have a lot of hyperparameters to choose then, right? So sort of what's the rate of mixing you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's actually correct. So that's kind of the uh, the details, and mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, we are uh, uh, preparing the manuscript to submit. And there are a lot of hyper parameters in the online learning framework. Uh, 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 for example, one, as you uh, said, the the how to mix the history and the sampling, how to choose the online learning windows, the moving strides, and also some uh, uh, learning rates in the uh, uh, neural network. So these kind of hyper parameters. We test a lot and select the optimal one in this problem. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. Thanks a lot. It's a very nice talk. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. It turns out I wanted to um, um, clarify the uh, speed up part of uh, what Jason has achieved in this. Uh, the this is a comparing with who for orders of magnitude. People have yeah. done the MD. Yeah, the MD will go through the, uh, the all degrees of within the playlist. Jason is actually uh, lumping them into a rigid body or deformable body. 
And so uh, this is a large reduction of uh, degrees of freedom, uh, which if you want to examine inside of a playlist, his method is powerless. Uh, but he, you know, he doesn't care about um, what's going on inside, and most of the time he doesn't. He just wants to get, um, get the emotion uh, of the playlet under the influence of the flow. Conversely, the flow influenced by the playlet on um, motion. So uh, that's all he cares, um, and mostly that's what people care. And uh, in those aggregation studies by many other groups, uh, they, they, they treat them as uh, one entire body. So uh, the learning is is, is a, a, a credit. Exactly. Yes. Are there any other questions and comments for Jason? No. If not, uh, Chelsea will will finish the um, seminar. No other questions. Great, great. Thank you so much, guys. Jason, you Thank did a you. great job. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Uh